Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. I have a quick tutorial today. I want to show you how I do the fancy fonts um, with the new kerning feature through Design Space and then but still adding in all the extra flourishes that I like. So this is the one that I'm doing today. Her name is Elia, I believe. So I am going to do an offset as well as, you know, use the the new kerning feature. So you can see the Y's got a lot going on, the H is the special letter as well as the E. So let me show you what that looks like first before you make any changes. So you go to text. And so for me, I always like to bring in whatever the name is going on. So the name is actually going on this big sign. So the sign is already sized. So that way I know how to size the name. I think that's the easiest way to do it. All right, so here is my text box. I'm gonna change my font. The, if you guys watch my tutorials, you know this is one of my favorite fonts. It's Hannah Berry Koo. It's from Creative Fabrica. And um, you can either use my link to get the membership, which I have a discount code for 30% off every month. So once you apply it every month, it's 30% off. It's the useless crafter 30, or you can just buy the font. It's totally up to you, but I use it so much because I feel like it's so low maintenance. It looks high maintenance, <laughs> but it cuts well. It cuts well on paper, on vinyl. Um, it looks really whimsical and kind of delicate, but it's not. So anyway, all right, so Hannah Berry Koo it is. So here's the name. I'm just going to type it uh, the way, it, you know, it is, and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so it's popping up up here. Ah, oh, there it is. So first thing is, let me make this bigger. Oh, and you know what? Let me change the E, because I think the first time I did, the, the reason why I went with lowercase, I just thought it looked better. But here's the E. Apparently they don't have an apostrophe, so we'll have to pull that from something else. And then here's the name. So I felt like it looked a little bit uneven this way, so I switched out for a lowercase e with a flourish leading into the e, and then I just pulled an apostrophe from some other font. And then I wanted to have, because I love Y's, and it's sort of kind of like in the middle, and this loop of the Y is so amazing. It's got the left side and the right side, so it really balances out the name with something underneath. And then to, you know, to match the E, my H is going that way. So the way I do this is, um, first let's ungroup it. And we know we need to get rid of the apostrophe because that's not going to work. And then just leave it as is. And I use main type. So um, you it's free and it's an app. So after you Google it and you download it, it's available. So what happens is in main type, you have all of your fonts that are on your system. So I'm going to scroll down to my favorite, Hannah Berry Koo. And here it is, Hannah Berry Regular. So on the right hand side in this frame right here are all the different characters that are available. So you can see for instance, I don't know how small this is gonna be on that Instagram IGTV, <laughs> but you can see you've got the, you know, the low swoop, you have the high swoop. I mean, there's just so many different things that you, and you know, you can click on it if you hold it down, you can see it bigger. So this, you know, oops, this H has like the extra line, the accent mark on top of it being very crazy at the bottom, right? Um, so you can kind of just scroll through and see what you like. So, you know, here's my E with the swirl going the other way if it was at the end of the name, right? So there's just so many things that you can do right here. So let's go and let's look at the Y that I chose, which gosh, I hope I can find it. I think it's this one. No, I don't think it's that one, but I'm not going to waste the time to actually find it, but let's just say we like this one, right? So it's highlighted. Do control C so that you can copy it. Then you're going to go back to design space. When you're in design space, this is where it gets, I mean, it's minor. It's not tricky, tricky, but you need to click on the new, a new text box. 
you need to make sure that your text box is the same font that you want to bring in. So I mix fonts all the time. That's not a big deal. We're already in Hannah Berry Koo. So now in my text box, I'm in my text box, I'm going to hit control V and it will drop in my new Y. So what I, I like leaving out the old layout because now I can make this Y as big, you know, to match my current Y. And let me change the colors so that it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so there's my original, right? I want my new Y to match so that it matches the rest of the letters. So this is my easy way of doing it. So see that matches, right? So now I can just pull out this Y, delete it, put in my new Y, so this is not the Y that I use, so you can see that. Um, <laughs> so I don't want this L to touch my Y. So you can either choose to move your L just a little bit up. Okay, so here's my Y. I'm gonna want a different H. So let's go back to main type and look for an H. And for my H, I want it to be maybe this one, okay? Because I want it to have the accent, the flourish to the right of the letter. So I'm already on it. I'm gonna hit Control C, go back to Design Space, click on a text box, make sure that my text box is the same font as the one I'm bringing in, and then hit Control F. So here is my new letter. There's my H. And again, I'm going to use this current age to determine my size. In the end, I'm going to resize everything, but I need everything to match up before I resize the whole thing, right? So this is the easiest way. So this matches to me. I'm just going to click on this H, delete it, and bring in this H. Now, before I weld it, I don't really like the distance between the A and the Y. So I will move this over just a bit. Let me click on it. There we go. So while the kerning feature, I mean, it's so much better than it was before, but you know, you still need to play around with it if you want to add the flourishes. Um, and sometimes depending on the font, it doesn't always work out. You still need to, you know, mess around with it. So anyway, the layout part is beautiful. <clears throat> let's, excuse me, let's bring in an E that I want. So I want the E to have the stuff on the left-hand side. So I think it's this one. So it's highlighted. I'm gonna hit Control C, go back into Design Space, click on the text box. I know I'm repeating myself, but you'll forget <laughs> until you get used to it. Make sure you're in the right font, um, and then Control V. So here is my E, and it's so pretty. So I don't have an E already over here. I could have typed in a lowercase E. That probably would have been the best thing to do. But I'm going to use my A a little bit to kind of at least size it, um, get it close enough. All right, so there's my E. I'm going to get rid of this E. And it's taking a moment. Okay. So here that is. Let's go to my text. Let's see what it, I don't remember what I chose for that apostrophe, but I'm gonna click on the font, get out of that one, and I might be able to find it. I think it was this one. So here's my, another font, just a regular font, because I need an apostrophe for the name. And there it is. So, oops, oh geez. There we go. It's a little bit straight for me. So I want to, you know, tilt it over a little bit and then size it accordingly to, oh my gosh, what just happened? Ah, it changed the font somehow. I didn't even, I must have touched it by accident. I don't know what happened. Okay, let's make that a little bit smaller. That was crazy. <laughs> All right, so let's say we like everything. We like the whole layout. So what I would do is I would grab it all and weld it because you wanna make sure the E part is not a big deal, welding or not welding, probably shouldn't have welded, but it doesn't matter. Um, 
to save space. That's why we can weld it. Um, but over here, the L to the A to the Y, A, H, you want to make sure you weld it. Otherwise, it's going to cut out the L. The L is going to go into the A. Then it's going to cut the A. It's going to cut off part of the L. You don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that in vinyl. You don't want that in cardstock. You want this part to be flowy like it would as if you wrote it with a pen and it's all one piece. Well, it'll be two pieces because there's a gap between the Y and the A. But here it is. And then once you're here, let's pull this over. I wanted an offset, so I'm gonna click on offset. So I'm not a big fan of like the big um, offset, like where it's really chunky. So that's totally personal preference. So I always like mine kind of on the thinner side. So I like about 0 0.10. I think it auto defaults to 0.25. Um, but anyway, there's a couple ways to change the, um, the size of your offset. You can either just type it in right here. So I like 0.10 inches. This is what I did earlier. And so it saved it for me. You can also move this ball. There's a little mark right here. That mark is your zero mark. If you go to the right, it gets bigger. Uh, you go to the left of that, it gets, it's the internal offset. It'll get smaller. It's going to be on the inside. I use that mostly for my 3d letters. Um, but all right, so you can see how that looks, right? So I'm just going to manually change it to 0 0.10 and then it's going to resize and I'm going to click apply. When you do that, it automatically turns to black. Not a big deal. I'm going to be using gold metallic gold foil and I think it's going to be so pretty. So I'm going to just change it so that we can see it. And I'm going to use a purple glitter on top. It's going to be just beautiful. Um, all right. That's all I have for you. Let me know what you think. If you have questions or you want to see something else, I would love to do that tutorial for you. See you next time.